out there available for you and wanting to help. So give them a call, check out their Facebook page or their website, um, and we can connect you with eBooks and other e-resources. Um, and you might even find some virtual programming. Um, so, so connect with your local library. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Happy reading. That was great. Thanks, Bria. Uh, awesome new segment, books and beer. Uh, I'm probably probably gonna sit down and uh, drink 12 beers and, and read a book. Actually, uh, we have a very exciting guest coming up here now. Uh, fantastic Northeast neighbor uh, has become a Northeast institution and uh, distribute their alcohol, their their spirits. Uh, you know, across the country, actually, and uh, have you know the best cocktail. Let's just say it, the best cocktail room in all of of Minnesota. Uh, I'd like to welcome the co-founder of Tattersall Brewing, uh, Dan Oski. Oh, we got Dan Oski. He disappeared. Look at that. There we go. Um, thanks for joining us on Who Needs a Beer. Yeah. How are you doing these days? I'm doing really good. Yeah. yeah, making a lot of sanitizer. A lot um, of sanitizer. Yeah. So what's that? Are you selling the sanitizer or is this all be, being given away? Or It's both. It's a combination. Uh, this week we did about 20,000 gallons. And so um, we have a, there's a website called allhandsmn.org. And the mission of it is basically um, about 65% of it goes out for free to first responders, nursing homes, healthcare workers, etc. Um, and then the other 35% of that is sold to uh, big companies, which basically funds the project. Um, and so it's, it's bonkers. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, how do you make sanitizer? Um, sanitizer? Ethanol, denatured ethanol. Um, and which then, is a product you already have. Well, yeah, well, we're not ordering it in. I mean, we can't keep up. Sure. Possibly. So, I mean, sadly, in the first week, we, we actually um, mixed in some of our high-proof whiskey, and that was a sad loss. Um, and then now we're bringing in ethanol from, from different partners around the Midwest, um, and then mix that with uh, glycerol, hydrogen peroxide, water. Um, and so it's, it's a WHO recipe that is basically public for distilleries to make if they can. Wow. So. That's fantastic. And you said you're giving away like 65% of it. 65%. So right now we have a staging dock at our distillery, which no one's allowed inside. We're trying to keep our distiller safe. We're trying yeah. to keep everybody safe. There's basically three teams and none of them actually even see each other really all day. Yeah, we have sort um, of the same thing going on yeah. here. And the then um, people come up to the front, uh, basically the garage doors. There's a little staging area right there where we keep our distance from them. And um, basically they pick up their sanitizer. So we, we basically give everybody a time slot to come in and pick it up. Was there ever a time in your life that you thought you'd be making hand sanitizer at your distillery? It was always a dream of mine. <laughs> so I think achieved that. Um, no, and it was, it's, it's weird to, to think back to you know, four weeks ago when things were relatively normal. Yeah. And um, to basically turn on, stop on a dime and just start a whole new business, basically. I mean, we had to learn, you know, the first week I think we did 1,000 gallons. And now we're doing 20,000 gallons. And so it's like, we're actually getting good at it, which hopefully we don't have to be good at for too much longer. And we can get back to uh, making hard alcohol. You haven't had any like nightmare spills of hand sanitizer, have you? No, but I have. Has anything uh, gone wrong? No, nothing's really gone wrong. I have nightmares though, about not being able to keep up on making hand sanitizer. Yeah. It's kind of classic like bartender like dream where you sure. can never keep up with the tickets. So now it's just I can't keep up with the. Uh, Bottling hand sanitizer. That's so, awesome. I yeah. think it's, that's really, really cool. Um, how is business otherwise? Business is okay. Um, it, was, it was good. We, we depend obviously a lot on the on premise, the bars and the restaurants. Yeah. Um, off premise has been very supportive, which is great, but about half of our business is uh, on premise. And so um, right now, what we're doing is we're just trying to drop off as much sanitizer at um, any place that's doing curbside, and then all, of course all the, the liquor stores, because we just want to make sure everybody's uh, safe. So yeah. we basically have two two guys and myself kind of just running around and, and dropping off sanitizer like, in our free time. You think you'll keep doing it after this is all over? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you brought some stuff to make some pretty cool cocktails today. Yeah. Um, so no shaker, no strainer, no muddling. There's, these are really, really simple. Um, Two of our kind of ready to drink uh, products. So we've got our bootlegger, which is our vodka redistilled with uh, 
lemon peel, lime peel, and mint, and I'm kind of like laughing because I'm like, oh, I get to pitch booze again. This is fun. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Um, and then it also has a little bit of sugar in there, and then a little bit of acidifier in there, so citric acid uh, uh, and malic acid. So is this also. meant just to drink by itself or meant to always mix? Uh, we normally pour this over ice and then add soda water. Oh, nice. So one to one. Um, same thing with the salty dog. This one's, uh, and both of them are, are really kind of malleable, but this one's really malleable. You can do a lot of with this. Um, this is basically a grapefruit distiller where we take grapefruit peel, uh, distill that with a little bit of juniper, a yeah. um, little bit of ginger, and then we back blend a little bit of clarified grapefruit juice, and then um, there is a little bit of acidifier in this one too. This is really cool. You can just pour this over ice, a little bit of soda. You can pour this over ice. Ginger beer, you can shake it with some tequila. Um, somebody told me today, like three parts of this to two parts rye whiskey is incredible. Nice. Um, so it's, we're seeing people getting really creative with this. This was going to be our big like 2020 like launch in, in, on April 1 this year. So um, you can find it out there uh, locally in Minnesota. Um, not really anywhere else right now, but it is definitely in the Minneapolis area. Are you guys selling spirits to go at the distillery? We're not. We're trying to just, just for safety reasons of both our staff and the public, we're, yeah. we're not letting anybody in. So we're not doing like the cocktail kits yeah. or the 375s right now. We're just like sanitizing. Well, good on you. It's, you know, trying to make the most yeah. responsible decision. I know we all are. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, do you want to make it for me? Yeah. You want me I'll, to make it or? It's either way. Um, I want to make at least one. I okay. Like on my hands on there. So these are really, really difficult to make. Um, you're going to take half of that, half of the drink is going to be the uh, salty dog, and then half will be the flavor wave. Here's some. Thank you. Thank Patterson you. Hand, hand sanitizer for you. <laughs> All right, say again. Okay, so just 50-50. 50-50? I think I can yep. figure that out. It's super easy. And same thing with this. So that one is a salty dog with the flavor wave, um, which is really cool. I'll let you explain That's the flavor. Cool. Check that out. That's all right. 50, that'll 50, work. That, that'll 50, work. 50, 50. <laughs> 50-50, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do a bootlegger. I feel like this is like, you know, yeah. what, what kind of disaster is gonna happen? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> um, this is bootlegger with. Is there the, more booze in the flavor wave or in the salty dog? The salty dog's 70 proof, so that's right. pretty strong. Let's go. Giddy up. Put the in there. Give it a little, uh, <laughs> little stir. With a little that. stir. Ooh, that it looks good. That's incredible. That's a nice looking color there. Orange is my favorite color. And that's, I'd say that's kind of orange. Some say orange is the new black. Orange is the new black. <laughs> All right, so salty dog, great for the flavor wave. Oh, wow. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a subtle, non-bitter grapefruit flavor. Um, it's rounded up by the maltiness of the beer and then the hops kind of like, it actually has some... The hops become tropical. It's yeah. like papaya and pineapple. It's super, There's a super lot cool. of hop aroma. And then yeah. you got a little grapefruit already, which is, you know, a lot of IPAs kind of already have that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, should we go to the technical difficulty slide so I can slam this? Um, yeah, we can yeah. do that. All right, well, I'll be honest, uh, kind of having a hard time finding things to break around here. So if you guys would send in some suggestions of things to break, I think that'd be really helpful. Uh, most of the things in the brewery are actually pretty valuable. And uh, I've, been, I've kind of run out of junk, and I think you're going to get bored of me breaking pint glasses and things like that. So I did find this, though. Well, we have this new uh, video tech, his name is Carl, and uh, we apologize about that. Carl has uh, been fired and we hired a new person already. Uh, 
But we're back, we're live. You guys got a little sneak peek of uh, the Break Me segment, or Break Something. I might be broken after this. We were just drinking this delicious cocktail here with Dan Oski of Tattersall. Uh, what is the name of this salty dog with flavor? Is there a name for it? I have no idea. I, I didn't even think about that. It's okay. Flavor salt? Salty flavor? No. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, flavor dog. Flavor dog. Doggy weight? <laughs> flavor dog. Flavor dog. <laughs> flavor dog. I like it. All right. What's next? <laughs> um, this was the uh, strawberry fields and the bootlegger, which I'm already kind of sipping on a little, yeah, little bit over here. So it's basically the vodka, a little bit of lemon, lime, and mint, and then, of course, your uh, strawberry fields sour. Which, Love it. Yeah. Yeah, the strawberry fields has like sourness. It's got a little bit of that kind of, <clears throat> it's gin in this, right? It's vodka. It's vodka, vodka with mint. mint and uh, lemon Some and lime. Shows how much I know. Hmm. It's fantastic. Yeah, high proof, have fun, get hammered, <laughs> enjoy your quarantine. You use that. Drink six of these and it'll be over. Um, so people can buy these out in the market, right? Yeah. Um, all over town in Minneapolis, and you, you, we're starting to see this one kind of spreading all over now. Yeah. Bootleg's been out for about it's a year, a, yeah. little, well, yeah, about a year, exactly. You can check that out, it's got a sailboat on it. Yeah. There's any sailors out there, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Sarah Cameron on Facebook would like to know if you're planning on san uh, selling the hand sanitizer. Um, you can hit us up on the allhandsminnesota.org. Uh, the one thing about that is right now it's mostly for bulk for first responders, um, but Sarah, we are working to get enough to support some uh, retailers right now. And the, and the idea there would be we would sell it to them at cost and they would sell it at that same price too, so nobody's making any money on that. That's the idea right now. We're just trying to catch up with, uh, we have a backlog of about, I think, 1,200 uh, people that need sanitizer as of today. Wow. So, um, but we are working around the clock, so we will catch up and you will see it soon. And we'll make an announcement on the uh, allhandsmn.org uh, website as soon as we do have some. Great. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? Nope, I'm gonna leave these bottles for you so you can right. uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend um, and hopefully not remember it. Yeah, I won't. Uh, it's it's chilly. Monday and I'll just be in a meeting and. Yeah. I won't regret a thing. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Dan. Thanks All for coming right. by. Thanks for everything you're doing. Yeah. Keep up the good work. You too. All right. We'll All see right. you. Take care. Uh, I think it's time for the break me segment, which that's what we took a slight pause for, so I hope it's worth it. All right. Well, I'll be honest. Uh, kind of having a hard time finding things to break around here. So if you guys would send in some suggestions of things to break, I think that'd be really helpful. Uh, most of the things in the brewery are actually pretty valuable. And uh, I've kind of run out of junk and I think you're gonna get bored with me breaking pint glasses and things like that. So I did find this though, this box. And I think this could be pretty fun to do. Uh, it's a box full of matches. And these are really great, they're actually indeed brewing company matches. But I'm kind of, kind of wondering maybe if what happens if I light the whole box on fire. You guys want me to try that? Let's do it. Alright. I don't know if this will work or not. We're gonna give it a shot. You got the fire extinguisher handy? No. You have the fire extinguisher handy, Andy? No, I do not. Again, uh, there was a really strong gust of wind that came up the first time and didn't, didn't help. Ah! <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Like I said, we're running out of things to break, so uh, if you guys have any ideas for things to break, uh, ideally not like the latest iPhone model or something like that, send them our way, because I this, like I said, there's most, most of the things around here are kind of valuable, and, and I might get yelled at if I break it. Um, 
So you have, my heart, Tom. Uh, I've already broken your heart multiple times, Mark, late at night. You just don't remember. Uh, <laughs> but 